Uh, so before I introduce Professor Hu, I would like to read the following acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge the University of Arizona is on the land and the territories of indigenous peoples. Today, Arizona is home to 22 federally recognized tribes with Tucson being home to the Odom and the Yaqui. Committed to diversity and inclusion, the university strives to build sustainable relationships with the sovereign native nations and the indigenous, people, indigenous communities through attrition offerings, partnerships, and the community service. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Jie Hu, an influential landscape architect and educator in China. Jie Hu is clinical professor of landscape architecture and the chair of the Master of Sustainable Urban Design program at the University of Illinois, College of Fine and Applied Arts. His major research focuses on the Shanshui city, which explores sustainable urban development in China. Before coming to Illinois, who taught at the Tsinghua University, establishing the Landscape Architecture Research Center inside the Beijing Tsinghua Tonghen Urban Planning and Design Institute, where he served as the director and the chief designer. He received the Life Life Lifetime Achievement Award presented by the Council of Educators in Landscape Architecture in 2018. He's a member of the Chinese Council of Landscape Architecture and a fellow of the American Society of Landscape Architects. He holds a bachelor's degree in architecture from Chongqing University and a two master's degree in landscape architecture from Beijing Forestry University and the University of Illinois at the Urbana Champaign. So without further ado, let's welcome Professor Chie Hu. Thank you, Boyan. Thank you, Gina, for hosting this uh, very important <coughs> lecture. And uh, I feel honored to join this uh, program and uh, share some of my experience and the thought and uh, try to discuss with the colleagues from University of Arizona. And uh, let me share my screen now. <coughs> Is uh, everyone can see the PowerPoint screen now? Is it okay? Okay, very good. Uh, thank you again. This is uh, Jie Hu. Right now, I'm in the University of Illinois and Urbana Champaign as a clinical professor. And before I join here, I'm working for Tsinghua University and also Tsinghua Tonghen Urban Planning uh, and Design Institute for 17 years. So during those years, uh, I was heavily involved in the practice and also education in both sides for urban development. Because uh, the platform of Tsinghua Urban Planning Design Institute, we have several large scale projects, which is uh, urban development, new development scale. So we meet, encountered many of difficulties, problems, for fast growing urban development. So urbanization is a significant uh, impact for human development. And in China, recent 30 to 40 years, the urban development growing so fast because that represents the wealth, the GPD, and the quality of life, and also the people's driven uh, by the economic growth. During those kind of fast urbanization, and we can see more people got rich and have housing to live. But at the same time, we got many urban problems like pollution, flooding, and traffic jams, and those also monotonic looking of the fast growing new cities all looks like the same. But when we look back like 400 years ago, before the Industrial Revolution, all the city built by their own local culture, material, art, crafts, and uh, skill. And each city shows different character, different culture, and different artistic expression, and leave, give people very clear impression of where they are, geology, location, and the cultural background. But uh, recently, <coughs> the, uh, 
the things the industrial revolution everything driven by economy and also especially when automobile being popular in 1940 50 and 60s the city more oriented by automobile uh, as a driven force for the layout and the space of the city. In early 1898, um, Ebenezer Howard wrote the book, Garden City of Tomorrow, and the response to the, uh, from England, North European industrial revolution, air pollution, bring many of the city problems. And one of his words I quoted here, I would say, and uh, inspiring for today's urban planner is the splendid possibility of a new civilization based on service to the community and not on self-interest as present, present the dominant move. So as city development, and we think uh, the future and the goal is for the community but not for personal property and personal well-being and wealth interest. Another famous quote from Muhammad, <coughs> Muhammad Gandhi is the world have enough for everyone's need, but not enough for everyone's greed. We are now facing the challenge of sustainable design and try to solve the urban problems after uh, like a 50 years fast development based on the economic driven. About uh, 100 years ago, in 1958, Fredo Olmsted <coughs> designed the Central Park in New York, New York, which is a landmark project for urban design with nature. Not only designed single park, Olmsted another major contribution, I call it urban planning and the green system planning and the park system planning. He would be the pioneer for develop the whole green park system for cities for future. Right now, many of the cities like Boston, I enjoy the like say from Olmsted, the Emerald Necklace park system in Boston, which is not a single park, but it's a uh, system based on the ecological and the river system and the rain water uh, harvesting, reusing, and right now shows the ecology function and the service to the cities. So this legacy we can enjoy not only one, two hundred years, maybe 500 to 1000 years. And after Olmsted, we got a, a book from Ian McHart talk about design with nature from more scientific way to analysis environment by layering system, which is the foundation for current GIS system. When this book published, when I was in school, I remember professor from uh, Harvard and the uni university uh, from US bring the sheets of transparent sheets to do layering analysis for urban planning. And then from those structure developed to GIS as, as a computer system much faster and also much more efficient, help people to understand the geology, watershed, weather, and the ecological system. And after McHart, there's a new leaders coming out as Charles Wildman and James Corner and talk about landscape urbanism and also have more discovery about the urban issues with the landscape, landscape architecture and the ecological system. And in their book, many cases talk about the green infrastructure to green infrastructure, including um, the, the waste dumping fields improvement and the water system, drainage water system, flooding and the control system. So bring more of the, we call the current engineer issues to the world of landscape architecture. And in one of the quotes I love the most from in my heart's book is, here the landscape architect, like the empiricist doctor, find a land in your house and brought it into good heart and to beauty. So that's really important for how landscape architect, urban planner 
working with the city, working with the project, working with the government. So the bottom <coughs> uh, important, most important thing is the good heart and uh, bring the city to beauty. So, so all the landscape architect and the urban planner needs to really care from the bottom of the heart of the environment, of the ecology system, of the global where we all live with. One of the famous uh, scientists, uh, Mr. Chen Xuesen, in 1990, wrote a letter to the urban planner and uh, architect uh, Wu Liangyong talk about the possibility uh, to utilize and to discover from Chinese landscape history, landscape poetry, classical garden, architecture, landscape painting in a whole to create a concept of Shanshui city. In Chinese, uh, Shanshui means mountain and water. So in long history, these two characters, Shanshui, represents the spirit, the culture, and uh, the physical mountain water and the natural world. So which he means uh, from cultural point of view and also from physical point of view, integrated the nature system into the urban system to create a unique form for the Chinese style ecological city. And Mr. Wu Liang Yong, he's a professor in Tsinghua Architecture School, leading in the planning and also design. He has a book about the science of human settlements. He put the architecture, urban planning, landscape architecture together, where the overlapping integrated part shows the surface and the service and the quality for the city. So also he has a diagram for one of his project shows the mountain, water, and the city should be integrated in a balanced way. And also dynamic uh, balance and in organic system. And uh, recently, <coughs> in recent years from United Nations, we have a sustainable uh, development goals in 17 goals, many of them like water, green, climate, and life on land, all related to urban planning, landscape, architecture, and uh, architecture. Three major columns here shows uh, ecological, social, and uh, economic as uh, sustainable development goals. In long history in China, from philosophical point of view, and from Lao Tzu and Zhuang Tzu, both talk about uh, the balancing between human life and the natural world. So man is a part of the natural system, but uh, not overriding their power to nature. And uh, their dream living quality condition is uh, the courtyard with the garden or the, the area between urban development and the natural world. And the people can enjoy the natural system and but also have the quality life. In long history in China, there's another kind of study school called Feng Shui. And uh, from now, we I uh, view the Feng Shui as more of the classical experience about the geology, understand the land form, understand the mountain water system, understand the weather system, wind system, integrate all the elements together and select the best land for human settlements. Some of the old city, probably we cannot say this is urban design, but developed through many years or according to the natural environment system. And uh, based on the feng shui principle, one side is a high mountain, one side facing the river and the water. And you can see from this picture, this city wall is not a circle, not a square, no street lines. It's a follow the natural contours and it goes meandering, follow the land form. And today we use this term called the low impact urban design, which is fully use the natural condition instead of use manpower to change this natural land to square or circle or with a central axis with a monumental promenade. But this city designed really like a garden, like a natural landscape. So city became part of the natural landscape. 
So we use this experience, we use what uh, traditional culture, feng shui, and uh, study and the philosophy from the history, integrated with uh, modern science and uh, ecology and science, such as in my carcass, uh, uh, system right now use GIS to do the site analysis. So integrate the traditional culture and the modern science together to do new urban development. One case study here as the first one is the Beijing Olympic Park. And the master plan winner is Sasaki Associates, which is in 2002. The winner, uh, I was very lucky working with the competition team, participate this competition and win this first place award world. And uh, you can see the central access line <coughs> is not occupied by major buildings. It's opened and laid out a sequence of plazas for people to use to celebrate their life and for the monuments of culture. And uh, the major venues as a large building put on both sides but not on a symmetrical way. And uh, it's one large building as a stadium on east side, but three major building on the west side. And uh, the central line po uh, point to water, mountain, as nature. So create a, a asymmetrical balance between one large building and a sequence of a smaller building. And uh, the center points is uh, the mountain and the water. So followed by this uh, master plan. And uh, during the time 2003, I leave Sasaki and back to Beijing, working with the Tsinghua University and the lead Tsinghua Urban Planning uh, Institute as a team working with Sasaki again. And when the second master uh, landscape master plan competition and uh, followed the, the second competition, we got uh, commission for the project Beijing Olympic Forest Park and the work with the contractors, other uh, collaboration teams all the way to build and finish this project in 2008 before the Beijing Olympic game started. And this is a huge project, urban scale project. The landscape area only for the forest park is seven square kilometers. And the total uh, the Olympic uh, green as a master plan for total is 12 square kilometers. And uh, it occupies the north uh, axis of North Beijing on both sides of Fifth Ring Road. It became part of the large green system for city. It play an important function of ecology function for the whole city. So the vision and the uh, uh, size and the scale needs to be goes bigger to think about the whole city development for future as a quality uh, urban space, quality life for people. And this is the photo standing on top of the man-made hill looking on the axis towards the center of the city. And here at the top of the mountain, we use a natural stone boulder as a symbolic monumental uh, piece to pray and also to appreciate the natural power and surrounded by pine trees, which is uh, uh, long life, green, evergreen trees also have a cultural meaning in Chinese natural uh, poem and the painting. Here are the man-made lake called Aohai. And we use a, a traditional scale to use the natural stone, build up the streams, waterfall. And also we have a contemporary scale for water fountain in the front lake. We create a large amphitheater, only this is a turf lawn, uh, very big, can host more than 20,000 people for summer concert and other inter entertainment events. For people, how to use this park, we specially design the walkway and the running and the jogging for three major loops. The small loop is uh, three kilometer, middle size is five kilometer, longer blue line is 10 kilometer. And the inviting people actually free, no tickets, come here. And uh, right now, most of people come here by group doing exercise, running, jogging. In winter, they also have a called uh, uh, naked pig running 
ice festival. <coughs> and uh, also many uh, close to 10 years being evaluated by the favorite park for runners in number one in China. And based on the ecology principle, we use artificial recon the constructed wetland to treat the green water, which is a collection of the rainwater and also the treated green water from the sewage water treatment plants. Go through this constructed wetland and purify cleaning and reduce the nutrition components in the water and bring it to the lake as a landscape water. So this is an example of a storm water management and also waste water treating, recycle, reuse uh, as a pilot example project. Here are different seasons and the birds are coming to the wetland became a unique ecological habitats in Beijing, in China. We also designed a tower. This uh, uh, steel structure wood tower is only for birds. It's a really a uh, build a bird's nest tower. And uh, a green bridge covered by earth and trees and uh, planting materials crossing Fifth Ring Road, connecting both sides of the park. And not easy for not only for people walking easily uh, across the Fifth Ring Road and also benefit for small animals like uh, birds, bees, butterflies. And we use the green architecture technology, bring natural lights into the building and the ecological corridor and also solar energy <coughs> collection for the saving energy, green energy use for the park. Material recycling, we design the system to collecting the human waste from toilet separate to liquid and uh, solid material treated as uh, fertilizer reused for the park. So after 10 years, we recently finished a paper, which is a 10 years review, evaluation, assessment of uh, Beijing Olympic Forest Park already published. And here are the photos in 2003 and 2008. In six years from master plan to finish the project. Right now, uh, keep progressing, Im improving, and uh, looks different every day. I would say looks better every day. And uh, <coughs> Landscape Architecture Foundation sent uh, people to do the case study. This study result right now you can find from the web website of CSI, the case study invest investigation in Landscape Architecture Foundation web website. There is an economic foundation, uh, economic benefit, and uh, ecological benefit, and a social benefit. This project uh, has got attention from the whole uh, the global professional area, got several awards, including ASLA 2009 award. The second case study I want to you, uh, introduce is Tangshan Nanhu Eco City Central Park. And we started this project at 2008, starting from the master plan competition. This location in Tangshan has experienced a huge earthquake, earthquake in 1976. This earthquake destroyed this industrial city, about 90% being destroyed. Many, many people being lost their life and the south side of the city, you couldn't find a single building left on the ground. And during uh, 30 years rediscovery, this is south part of the Tangshan city because the coal mining underneath, there is many of the settlements, the sinking site became the, the water collection area and also dumping the place for dumping garbage the city municipal garbage and the industrial waste, including steel, uh, industrial waste, and uh, coal mining waste, and the other waste material all down to here. And the size is more than 10 square kilometers, very large. And uh, the city mayor make a major de uh, decision to rediscover this uh, area and inviting several scientists team to do environmental evaluation and also pollution control 
and the land use and the evaluation, and also geology, the, the coal mining underneath is still going on, is this site can do development or not. After this kind of research and uh, investigation, they got the results and uh, they believe it's possible to change this piece of land, make that uh, useful. So they call four firms for urban planning competition. So Tsinghua Urban Planning uh, Institute being invited as one of the competition firm. And uh, I was the team leader for this competition as one team uh, played the role of a team leader. And uh, our team won the competition. And uh, right after the com competition, we got a commission for the central park design called the Nanhu New Development Eco City, Nanhu Eco City Central Park. The starting size is almost six square kilometer, uh, just a little bit smaller than Beijing Olympic Forest Park. And we started with uh, the cleaning the site, remove the garbage, and uh, build a garbage hill and seal and covered by earth and plants, and reuse some of the waste material like uh, ash from the coal mining and making bricks and other uh, building materials. So soon, and uh, after two or three years, the planning, design, construction. So actually our design team was working on the site and day and night working with the contractor and to the construction team and build a very fast, a very fast way to build this uh, park and also really relatively low cost. During the construction, we, prepare, we pre uh, protect all the existing trees, wetland, and also ecological valuable resource and make it a lake. And also this is the garbage hill covered by earth, sealed it and uh, build a, a pavilion on top of it. And also plants covered this uh, one. And uh, the willow, uh, <coughs> small willow trees being used uh, as uh, uh, protection material on the edge of the water and uh, they live in again and the uh, browse and looks uh, as a green uh, structure. Here are the, some photos of uh, Tangshan Nanhu Park uh, during the development and uh, during those uh, years being welcomed uh, by people and uh, also the habitat for the very rich of birds and animals. And the citizens from Tangshan are really enjoy to use this area for exercise and holiday and enjoy the nature and became the photographer's hot spots and the wedding photos hot spots. <clears throat> and also Landscape Architecture Foundation have for this case study investigation and we did this again for Tangshan Nanhu Central Park for benefit, performance and benefit, economic, social, and ecological benefit. Third uh, case study is a comprehensive planning of an international horticulture exhibition 2019 in Beijing. Location is in Yanqing, uh, north, northwest uh, corner of Beijing. You need to drive one hour to the a small town called uh, Yanqing. So this uh, master plan uh, start from the competition. There is uh, eight com combined team to compete and uh, our team to get uh, this awarded as number one. And also working with the other team together after the competition to do this uh, master plan. So we started the master plan not within the right line boundary given by the client. So we start of study from the, this whole watershed, <coughs> the, the whole area followed by this uh, Guihe River and the both side of the mountain ecology because uh, the Guihe River, the river quality, water quality is not so good. Here, uh, when the river goes through the city, uh, not only clean these spots for the river, we need to clean the whole system. So we study the, the river, uh, watershed area and trying to protect this river, improve the whole quality of this whole river, starting from the top of the mountain, the uh, Baihepu Reservoir, and all the way down to the project area. So we need to break through all the barriers, especially the land ownership. 
And uh, we need to deal with every pieces, every village and the small towns which by the river to clean up, stop dumping the waste water to the river and uh, clean the river system. And when we do the planning and the design inside this horticultural ice ball boundary, we have for this GIS related 3D modeling system to have visual analysis, bring the north and the south mountain peaks into the view sheet of this development. So when people are walking through this expo, they can also enjoy the Guishi River and the mountain and the peaks from both sides. We also select the two mountain peaks as the major axis uh, visual targets like this one is to the uh, called the Guanmo Mountain. Oh, here it is. One axis called the International Horticulture Axis towards the Haito Mountain. Another landscape horticulture axis towards the Guanmo Mountain. So we bring the real natural landscape, mountain water as the view into our development. Inside our development, we create a small uh, habitats for birds, for small animals, especially protect all the trees and not cut those trees for new development. So we spend money to build a, a sunken well, protect these uh, existing trees. After master planning, we also did uh, a portion of this expo for construction design called the Nature uh, Ecology Expansion Area, about uh, 60 hectares. This is a wetland area, always been flooded almost every year, been flooded like from one week to two weeks in water. And all the trees here are single species, poplar trees and willow trees. We invited a professor, Bart Johnson from University of Oregon to give us a lecture about the ecological and habitat rebuilding. And he visited the site with me and did this ecological habitat design on site. So here are the analysis of habitat planting material on current site. This is a bird's migration study and uh, habitats for uh, dragonfly, habitats uh, uh, for birds, habitats for bees, and uh, also protect the dead trees. When we study the existing forest, we find that there's only one single species, poplar and uh, very densely planted in 1960s, which is already old for poplar trees, already more than 50 years old. And you can see the regular forest uh, single species, which is ecological system is not so well, so, so well done. So we have a proposal to thin that up, 50%, 70%, open the window in the forest, and then discover the existing uh, local indigenous planting material and build a new ecological planting system by layers. So it's a ground layer, the shrub layer, small tree layer, tall tree layer, and also integrated some color, fall color and the spring color system for landscape. All introduce the new plants are indigenous plants. And based on the depths of water to plant uh, the wetland planting material. And those uh, planting design are systematic thinking with water landform and uh, planting habitats. And uh, so it's good for different animals. And uh, this is after uh, the rebuild, reconstruction, modified. This is uh, a human influence, the nature, and uh, make this uh, uh, the nature system uh, more uh, vitalized and more interesting. The case study for landscape and the ecological master plan for Qingdao urban uh, Sino German, Sino German Eco Park, which is the Qingdao government working with the German government have for a scientific research park. The size of the area is 30 square kilometer. We were invited for ecological landscape master plan. They call the city like a park or in other words, uh, Park City as a concept to redevelop this whole area. So after we visit the park, we tell the owner or client, says the ecological system uh, to design and for future construction and research, 
we cannot limit it on this right line by your property line, only 30 square kilometers. We, in, we need to enlarge it to the mountain ridge, to the whole watershed, and uh, the whole region all the way to the ocean edge. And uh, the client tell me they don't have the plan and they don't have the money to pay for this research. So we ask what's their suggestion. They said, uh, your um, proposal idea uh, sounds good, but we cannot make a decision for you. You can go ahead and talk to our mayors. We did. So we asked them to help us contact the mayor and the local planning bureau director. So we had a meeting on site. We talked about our proposal and got their support. This is a good idea. For future, we need to do the landscape ecological research for the whole region. So they expand. Uh, give us another contract for regional ecological study based on the GIS analysis, study the mountain land uh, ecology, watershed and the waterway, and also highway, driveway, and the uh, ocean water side ecology integrated together as a urban, as a, a landscape ecological system study. And uh, after this uh, big system study, we down to the site, doing this uh, called a belt and the system uh, corridor for water drainage, for people's uh, culture and exercise, and uh, for recreation, for health care. And, uh, and then go down to smaller scale for water sy uh, green system, water system, landmark uh, projects, and a pilot park green project design. So here shows a couple project uh, we designed for the client as a pilot project. So from like a 200 square kilometer as a regional ecological system study and a down to pilot project goes through several scale, several layers needs to be integrate the bigger planning issue all the way down to design construction issue. So this is uh, the uh, finished project. So what we learned from this uh, almost 20 years experience and also large scale projects, we feel uh, every day we are struggling. We, the one struggle is uh, we call the silos between professional. And the, ar the architects, the landscape architect, urban planner, civil engineer, all have their own territory and the boundary to work with. And it's hard to cross this boundary. Another is on site. We have ownership boundary. We have barriers between school, between residential, between industry, and other property owners. How could we do ecological system design and cross this boundary and to really work with other people, other property owner, other stakeholder owner together? This is really a challenge. So facing this challenge, first thing we need to believe we should do that. And the second, pursue it, talk with other professionals, other property owners, and build up a system for collaboration. We believe our designers can do good design. The good design can change the world. What we need to do is making our effort, our love really from our heart to work with other people together make an integrated, synthetic, harmony, systematic, and uh, through collaboration for a project which is continuity, long-lasting, and holistic as a system, dynamic is keep changing and moving, poetic and picture risk with a culture richness and also visually beautiful. Thank you very much. This is uh, my uh, talk for today and welcome for any other questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for that inspiring talk and such great case studies of projects that you've worked on. I would like to open up our lecture to questions. Um, if you have something you'd like to ask, you can raise your hand. I'm not sure I can see everybody, but you can also put it in the chat and I can call on you. Bo. Bo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, th thank you again, Professor Hu. Really, really impressive lecture and uh, really, really 
Wonderful, and I uh, appreciate that. I have a question. Um, the um, as we see climate change really right now posing a lot of threats and a lot of challenges to the planning design profession, and we see flooding issues uh, in China, Germany, also here in the U.S. Uh, I'm curious about uh, the Shanghai City principle and also your practice, the case studies you present. Uh, maybe you could share a bit more about how this resilience thinking, climate resilience, uh, integrated into your current practice or education. Um, so could you maybe elaborate a little bit on that? Thank you. Oh, yes. Very good question. Thank you, uh, Boyang. And uh, we do have uh, thinking for the uh, climate change, this global issues, especially for the large city and uh, after new development, the major challenge is the inner flooding issue. And recently in five to six years in China, the construction bureau and uh, have a new policy called the sponge city policy and uh, change many of the hard paving to uh, permeable uh, paving and uh, try to dig in small, we call the rain garden inside the city whenever the place allows, especially in parks and the green space doing small called a rain garden. So after several years practice in this kind of guideline of concept for inner city improvement, uh, in increase permeable space and increase rain garden, it help a little bit, but under the huge disaster of uh, the heavy rainfall and uh, uh, the storm, very heavy storm, is not really from the bottom of the problem. So I, from my point of view, it's uh, we cannot solve this issue, just solve the problem inside the city. We need to think about the space and the area as a larger sponge outside the city and the green space around the city. And before the river hit the, uh, the city, ran into the city, we need to have a channel to let the water go around the city. So we do have several master plan dealing with we call the large scale water management system, working with the hydrology bureau in several city to guiding the water. And when the, when the river going through the city, we have a reservoir before the water in, get into the city and hold the water there and have another channel go around the city, bring to the, uh, the downstream of the city, have another reservoir. So before the river, river going through the city, we have a reservoir and after the downstream, we have another river. So which is adjusting both sides, the water management and they try to drain the water out of the city, we still need to use pump and the pipe system because this kind of, uh, in South China, especially the high ground water value area like Suzhou and Hangzhou, no matter what you dig, doesn't help because when you dig in within one meter, the ground water come out. So those kind of rain garden system and the permeable material system not working for the wet area, South China, and also not working for the Northeast China, that's too cold, it's frozen, all right. It's, uh, so that system won't, uh, won't, only can solve a little bit of problem, but we need to have a bigger vision for the whole water system and also outside the city, try to solve the problem instead of only dealing with the, the problem inside the city. So that needs a bigger revision. So landscape architect not always looking at the project size and the scale, needs to have a bigger vision, go over the project, go over the city. And from regional points of view to have the proposal suggestions to solve this problem, which is indicated to the climate change, wildfire, and the flooding issues and the related environmental issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank I see you. Chance. We have quite, a couple uh, additional uh, questions here. Um, there's one a question from Mark Ginsburg. I'll read it. I wonder how you measure the performance of these projects. I ask in the context of tools like lead for cities and sustainable sites. 
that help design and then track energy, water, waste, carbon, et cetera. Incidentally, Olympic Village was the first lead ND in China with a near zero welcome center that I helped design, Mark Ginsburg. So could you address the issues of performance and measurement of the performance of these sites? Oh, yes. And uh, for the performance, um, as a design firm, we have for some data before the project built, and especially the water and the air quality, environmental uh, assessment data. And we collect the information during the construction and also after construction. Right now in Beijing Forestry University, there's a, a faculty and a team leader, Professor Dong Li, have a student and a research PhD student, the research team followed uh, man, many years to test water quality and air quality in Beijing Olympic Forest Park. And also the economic data shows on the land value and the housing value, um, the <coughs> commercial value, which have annual report. And so the social effects we have for uh, called the interview in person and the questionnaire spread to the visitors and the users of the city. And uh, almost uh, the schools, universities and the students always uh, use uh, Beijing Olympic for, uh, Forest Park as a research uh, target and goal and set up these kind of questionnaires to go there to uh, collecting data. Even from the website, we can find more than a hundred PhD and a master thesis, which is analysis of Beijing Olympic Forest Park performance in 10 years. So after we collect those information, we can gather the data, follow the time stream for 10 years to assess the successful, the problem, the issues and the failure of this Olympic Forest Park. So we keep following that. So this is how I answer this question. I will continue to follow this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question I think we have time for, um, and then we'll wrap it up. So Kenneth Kako, I can't pronounce your last name, Kenneth Kako, Kroko, sorry. Um, it says, thank you for the wonderful presentation. My question is about the other side of this coin with specific focus on the Olympic Forest Park. Given the care taken to design sustainably, can you speak to how the team addressed the issue of displacement of existing residents, which often accompanies such large projects? Yes, a uh, very hot uh, topic. Uh, we always facing this uh, kind of question. In China, and the uh, ported a mega size and a huge scale and also land. And in Beijing Olympic Forest Park, before the uh, planning design, this park, uh, there's nine villages. And uh, more than, um, I believe from 3,000 to 6,000 local farmers use the land, either, either doing the farming or they have a, called a nursery company. They're working for the nursery there. And uh, they have a, a plan how to relocate those people. And based on the, their residents, the size of their home, they pay how many uh, yuan for per square meter of their home. And sometimes they double or triple based on the family's condition, how many people are in the uh, family. So the people being moved out, they got the cash on site. Okay, I, I just uh, visually see those kind of work. They just have a whole deck of cash, just give them and move away. Because the legal ownership in China different from US, the people can own their house, but they cannot own the land. So the government have this kind of large mega project, they just use the money to pay the residents and ask them to leave. And they don't have power to argument, says because they don't have land ownership, they only evaluate the property and the house and what you have on the land. So this is one way. Another way is the Olympic Forest Park Management Committee is a part of the government. So they promise the local residents to hire uh, people, like hire from 2,000 to 3,000 people working for the park 
for cleaning, for uh, security, for other uh, the management system for the park. So they actually hired more than 2,000 people from the local. And the, after the uh, people being moved out, I did interview a few of the families. And some says, uh, I'm already old, I'm fine. I got enough cash paid for the rest of my life, I'm okay. And uh, some says, uh, I, I'm not so happy with my current job. I lose uh, the original job. I'm still looking for a better job. But uh, this is uh, happens in China everywhere, especially for the private um, residential development. There is many of the called forcing relocation and the conflicts happens everywhere and uh, happens every day. So how to solve this problem properly and uh, make uh, both sides feel happy is a challenge. I would believe continuously happen, but uh, both sides are trying to uh, solve the problem peacefully as happy as possible. So that's what I experienced. Okay, thank you for the question. Thank you very much um, for participating in our lecture series. It's been very informative and interesting. And thank you all to the students and faculty who joined us today. Um, if there are any other questions for the professor, we can probably send those along to him in an email. But um, other than that, thank you very much. And uh, we did record this lecture, so it will be available for people who would like to watch it in the future. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Paul. Thank you again, Professor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.